and I've given up on that damn thing. They need to replace it. Mm. So hello and welcome to Dommy Tries This. I hope you brought your cuppa. Today's coffee mug was a gift from one of my daughters. I believe my oldest. Might have been my youngest. I think it was my oldest. It has a kitty on the front with the handle as its tail. I'm gonna have to turn this around with this hot tea. Ah, she's hot. On the back, it says meow. And then once again on the front, turning ourselves back around, we have some uh, paw prints showing up on the inside, which I think is adorable. Uh, this was a Christmas gift last year. And yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to bring out some of my older mugs that may not have been seen in a while. Anyway, so today's tea in that mug is a puka tea. And as you recall, puka, I was introduced to the puka teas through my sip spy. However, this is not a sip spy tea. This is the puka chamomile vanilla and manuka honey, a soothing dip in organic pool of calm. This is the packaging. I actually took all of the sachets out and put them in my one of my boxes back here but I found this in Kroger and it was about four or five dollars so it's not a cheap tea but it did come with 20 sachets and this tea has in it let me find it chamomile flower fennel fennel sweet seed sweet and bitter licorice root manuka honey flavor, vanilla flavor, vanilla pod. Uh, they say 10% fair wild certified ingredients, 20% um, fair trade ingredients certified according to fair for life standard. And it is made in the UK by Puka. So I was really happy to see this on our shelves because I do believe that I liked the other, I think it's, I've, tried one or two of their teas through my sip spy and I think I enjoyed them so I was really happy to see this and go ahead and pick it up it's not a tea that I will probably drink often even if I do like it just because of the price um, I'm used to getting my stashes which were around three three and a half so this was a good dollar to a dollar half more than that I have another one that's even more expensive hmm. We found a couple of teas but anyway so we're gonna go ahead and give this a sip she has not been steeping long it is a regular sachet, tea sachet. It doesn't look particularly chunky or anything. But as I recall, most of the teas that I've gotten by Sip Spy have had a really nice flavor to them. But like I said, she hasn't been steeping long and she's really, really hot. So we are possibly not going to be able to get a good taste of her today. Let's go ahead and give it a sip and see where we're at. You can smell the honey. You, wow, you can really smell the honey, and the honey is kind of far down on that ingredient list. Ooh. Ooh, I think I like this one. What is very interesting is when I picked this up, I didn't realize that this had licorice in it. I'm not a fan of licorice. Fennel has that kind of licorice taste too, as far as I can call. I picked it up because I do like uh, chamomile and vanilla and manuka honey. I like honey. I just, for me, usually honey is usually too light of a flavor, so I figured I wouldn't taste it. But you are getting those flavors. They're already blending beautifully. And that licorice is not too strong, which is nice. It gives a real interesting depth. It's going to be interesting to see how that has, um, how that changes between now and the end of our video. Alrighty, so today we are talking about our one month palette for the month of October and I chose the Sugar Pill Fun Size Mini Color Palette. Uh, I have to apologize. Uh, this palette is still listed on the Sugar Pill site. Uh, it was $28. However, and, and it still has a notify me, but it is still sold out. So I did try to get this in in a timely manner so that if you were interested and you wanted a uh, 
review before you bought it, you would be able to do that. But considering that the last one, I introduced it at the beginning of October, that it was listed as sold out then, I suspect it is gone. I am really trying to make my one month palettes uh, palettes that you can purchase. So I may just have to not do any of the limited editions at all. You guys will have to let me know down below if you're still interested in any of the limited edition stuff um, that may not be available on their actual sites. You can probably find them in places like eBay or Amazon or a reseller. I would just uh, caution you to be very careful if you're going to buy through that uh, because we are, you know, you're looking at uh, people who fake out the pallets and uh, you could have some dangerous chemicals or whatever in there. Anyway, so this is, uh, this was from Sugar Pill. It is a $38, uh, $28 palette. Really? I just looked. It was $28. Like I said, it is listed as sold out. They do have a notify me button. Uh, all I can say is if you're interested in it after this review to hit the notify me button on their site and find out if it's going to be coming back in that way. You may get an email saying, okay, you're on our list to let you know, or you may get an email saying that this particular palette is no longer going to be available. The color story I think is actually really nice. I think my only complaint about this palette is that it is entirely matte. As you all know, I like shimmers and we will get into that uh, in just a minute as to why I prefer to have at least some kind of shimmer in a palette or I will uh, supplement an all matte palette with a shimmer, which I did with almost all the looks that you're going to see today. There's only three of them. Uh, it was a rough month. We're gonna go with it's a rough month. I actually did not use makeup a whole lot this last month but I did use this a few times and I did use it both uh, by itself and as a support palette I do believe all the looks you're about to see were when it was a support palette the look today obviously is uh, all by itself it's a rainbow color story to a degree I do think it's mix missing an actual blue this particular blue comes off as more purple uh, this purple is a bit more pink so we are kind of missing a blue in there but at the same time, I'm not really missing a blue. I honestly think that this is one of those few palettes that works the way it is. All three of these are greens. When you see this, you think it's a yellow, but it's actually kind of a chartreuse color. I'm not gonna see it very well on my skin. Um, but it is. it has a greenish cast, and it's a very beautiful, light color for under the the brow I did use it today but I mixed it with the other green here to do our under the brow colors you'll see uh, the quality is actually really nice it does not have a lot of fallout it does have um, not a lot of kickback but a pretty decent amount of kickback uh, in the pans but I didn't notice a huge amount of fallout on my eyes and it doesn't seem to be too brush fussy and on my skin these colors do show up on my eyes um, I don't know if you can see under there but these colors do show up on my eyes and when you're talking about the yellows and oranges and colors like that having them show up on my eyes actually indicates to me that they're a very good quality they're very soft in the pan they apply beautifully they uh, blend well and I'm actually really really impressed and I'm glad I managed to pick it up uh, this was going to be the only way I was ever going to get a sugar pill sugar pill palette uh, sugar pills palette they usually do a custom palette and you have two options of six or 12 pan and to get either of those you have to actually buy the colors themselves and the colors cost ten dollars a piece there's no way I am going to pay sixty dollars for six pans of shadow or $120 for 12 pans of shadow. It's just, that's just too much. And honestly, if this formula here is any indication, and I've heard this formula is very, very similar to their regular uh, singles formula. If this formula is any indication, it's good. It's not that good. It is not worth $120. Now, from what I've also seen, they are huge pans. Uh, I don't need huge pans. I've got so many eyeshadows that I much prefer something much smaller like this that I actually have a chance of eventually getting through one day, maybe. Um, 
But overall, the quality is good. They go on beautifully. They blend together well. I, I ended up having to blend this color and this color to get something a little darker on the outside of my eyes. And they blended very, very well. Uh, this color and this color is under my brow. Again, blended very well. Uh, they're very smooth. They're very, um, I don't want to say powdery, but they do have sort of a uh, silky texture to them when they're applied to your eye. They go on very pigmented. So the quality is very, very good. I would say the something like this from Sugar Pill is worth the cost. It's just those big $10 pans that I would avoid unless they were like 50% off or something. And they will probably never be 50% off. You know what? I take that back. At $10, I, I would take 20% off and say, okay, so it's a high-end item. I can, I think, eight dollars, seven to eight dollars a pan would make sense for that on sale. But uh, not anything I can afford anytime soon. All right, so we are going to attempt to swatch these, but as you saw, we are probably not going to get a huge amount of color. I don't have any kind of primer on my hands and I don't have any kind of concealer on my hand. So they aren't gonna show up, especially the lighter colors aren't going to show up nearly as well as they have on my eyes. However, from my eyes, you can tell that they're doing really well. All right, so our first row is Cheat Code, which is the darker green, B Bit, which is the bluey purple, and Player One, which is the pinky purple. I'm gonna go. So see, they're looking pretty transparent on here. But they do show up on the eyes. Row two is Twitch, Level Up, and Rage Quit. Now I will admit that I have not used Level Up or Rage Quit. N haven't found a look to use them for but I'm assuming from the texture and the feel of them that they would work just as well as any of the others. Or better. These two colors are very, very close together. I think if they'd made that one a little bit darker, it might have helped. Other than that, I don't think I would say change anything in the color story. Then we have Continue, High Score, and Game Over. That's that, that chartreuse -y, I think it's chartreuse, that kind of light off-color green. Now my only complaint about the red, I don't know what that cat's doing. My only complaint about the red is that it's an orangey red and it shows up underneath my eyes as an orangey red. I don't know if you can see that under there, but it does, it's an orangey red and I much prefer deeper bluer reds, but it, even with my complaints about, you know, uh, these two colors being too close together in terms of shade, uh, shade shading, uh, and this one being more of an orangey red, uh, they actually just match in the palette itself. I really don't know what that cat is doing. They really match in the cat palette itself. Uh, so even though there are things that what the hell? Oh, right back. Okay, once again, sorry about that. Finally figured out what he was doing. He was getting in the trash and we have to stop that. Anyway, as I was saying, even though there are some adjustments that I personally would have liked to have seen, uh, even without them, this palette works. I don't think there's really, even with the desire for a blue in here, I don't think it's really missing, if that makes any sense. I think it could have added to it to find a blue that, that fits this particular type of color story. Um, but I also don't think it's too bad without it because you can just take this purple and use it in such a way that it actually helps you create a deeper blue. So I think overall that color story is really nice. Um, and I think you can tell from the look that the swatches just do not tell a story about um, how well they're going to work on your eyes and they do leave some staining. This is a damp baby wipe. I always use baby wipes 
but that staining shows that they have um, some some stay with. In fact, that red doesn't want to go. That red really doesn't want to go. But uh, that shows that they have staying power and are likely to last through the day on your eyes. At least that's what Jen Loves Reviews says. So overall, it is a really good palette. I did enjoy it, but that being said, I didn't use it very much. Uh, it wasn't just the fact that I didn't use makeup much. I think that obviously made an impact and I had other things that I was trying to play with last month. Um, but also I think the, for me, it works best as a uh, support palette. I do like the look that I came up with today, but overall I think this just for me is, um, it needs the shimmers for me for one, and it needs something to be a bit more subtle in the colors. Especially the way I do my eyes, I like a little bit of depth on the outside. It's hard to get that. The I think what the issue is is that the saturation of the colors is pretty much the same. Nothing's really that much deeper. Nothing's that really much lighter except in terms of the color. It's not really in terms of, say, we've got a nice light yellow and that nice deep orange. It just doesn't come across that way. The color tones are fairly... Uh, much the same, which is nice in the sense that you have something consistent, but um, you, it's harder to get nuanced looks if that's what you want. And I prefer to do that. I cannot do, say, the Halloween stuff, but I do like to have some nuance in my looks. And that's really hard to do when all of the colors basically have the same saturation level, which is what these do. Alrighty, so let's talk about first our image and the looks that I did. So the image I think I mentioned when I introduced the palette um, actually doesn't quite fit. A lot of these images I will pick like a week or two before I pick up the palette or I will pick and then I will pick out the palette for whatever reason, usually inspired by the image. This time I had picked up, I actually had picked up this image I believe in the middle of September, um, or I, even at the beginning of September, I think September I had picked up two images at the same time. This was the second one. I really do love this image. However, the palette doesn't quite match. And I do believe I mentioned that when I introduced the palette at the beginning of October. And this is Discovery, uh, you know, Amy Brown with the little dragons. Uh, the biggest issue I think with this palette versus that image is that this palette didn't have that deeper blue or deeper green. I did use this blue to try to deepen this up on the outside corner of my eye, as you'll see when I do the look later. Uh, the other colors work. There was no brown really. Uh, but I do think the other colors work. It's just overall, this is much brighter than the image. Anyway, here is the image, Discovery by Amy Brown. All right, so let's take a look at some of these uh, looks that I did. Uh, as I mentioned, they are um, all with the palette as a support palette. I did have a difficult time being, well, I wasn't, using that much makeup so it was much harder to look at it and just start to be creative with it so it ended up getting mixed a lot uh this first one and all of them are from later in october i don't know why that is i don't think i kept some of the earlier ones the photos themselves i don't think came out but the first one is um includes this palette and the betty boop palette from um Ipsy and the Snow Angels from BoxyCharm. Now you aren't going to be able to see a whole lot from this, but the greens in here are from this palette. Uh, most of the other colors are from the other palettes, but the greens came from this palette. And here is that one. So for this next image, uh, you actually can't see it, but I used a, uh, one of those, um, well, I can show you. I used this fairy light from Pixie on my lid. Unfortunately, for some reason, when you take photos of something like this, the actual glimmer of it doesn't really show. Uh, so 
it looks more like it's you know a, a dark red across my lid the rest of that actually came from this palette uh, i basically was trying to use the pixie to do something a little different brighten things up help get some of these darker colors quote-unquote darker colors the reds and the oranges to really kind of pop a bit uh, instead I got a really interesting sunsetty kind of look I'm not mad at it I think it's a really nice look uh, however it didn't come out the way I had planned let's just put it that way and here is that look All right, so I have to take something back. The next look actually is this palette all by itself. I did it uh, with one of my FB Lives. I go do a live every Sunday afternoon, evening. It's usually around 4.30 or so EST uh, called Sunday Break with Dami, and we play with a little bit with makeup. Um, I experiment with uh, things that come in from Ipsy and Boxy, and I work with the One Month Palette, or I try a new foundation, things of that nature. Anyway, so this is one of the looks that I did with this palette, and it's entirely this palette. Uh, the look on this one is a bit lighter. I used the more of the purples and pinks across the, the lid. I did more of a traditional look. I did change my look a little bit how I did it this time. But I did the, the purple and pinks across the lid, and then I had kind of a green in the crease, and so and then the, that chartreuse up top but yeah so here is that look all righty so if you want to know how i got this look today I'll give you a bit of a peek just go ahead and keep on watching because we're going to start it right now i'm going to don't have a brown so I'm going to mix this chartreuse color here with this green here for under my brow. This is going to be interesting. So we are mixing these two colors. Uh, we got some creasing going on. There we go. I actually like that color, the way that worked out. It has enough of that mint to tone down the chartreuse, but it has enough of that chartreuse. I think that chartreuse, it's a really, really light, 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 limey green. Um, has enough of that to give that lighter under the brow kind of coloring that I like. So now I'm going to take this deep, this deeper green and put it across the lid and then I'm going to try to mix the outer edge of it with this purpley blue to try to at least get a deeper bluish green color than what we've got in the pans. One thing that I have discovered is that these do, in addition to applying very, very well, they do also seem to blend and mix well. So we're going to take this all the way across. All the way across. Like that. Make sure my crease is all taken care of, although we will cover the crease again later. Okay, so grabbing a different brush and I'm going to take that purpley blue, that bluish purple, whatever, and we're going to try to blend it in and see if we can get something a bit darker out here to go with that much darker color that we've got in the uh, image. And it's deepening it up a little bit. Not a huge amount but enough to give it a more of a 
deeper cast. I'm going to have to go over my upper part of my lid in a little bit too. Don't want to overdo it. Trying to keep that green going into this crease again. Like that. Kind of works. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that green and try to fix this area up here where I got a little too low. That worked. And then I'm going to the other side. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take this lighter purple and go in my crease and out to my point on my uh, brow. This is pretty standard for me. I just like the shape that 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 particular line gives my eyes. You can see these colors actually work, blend quite well. I haven't decided how I'm going to deepen this up without using that other purple. Because we've already used that other purple. I may not deepen it up at all. In fact, I think I won't. I think that this is going to be pretty just like this without that extra. Just like that. I'm taking another flattish brush and taking that light purple under this area right here. But I'm going to move on to a different color in just a minute. Just right there. Okay, cleaning that brush off on the meat of my hand. I usually use my other thing, but it's easier sometimes to do this. And looking at our picture. So we've pretty much used our color palette. And so I am going, I mean, from the photo, I'm going to actually take this orange, which is very unusual for me. I usually keep any oranges on the lid or maybe under the brow because oranges and yellows can turn my face out like I'm very sour like I'm turning sick but we're going to take this orange using the same brush that I put the pinky purple on and I'm going to go under here it's not a very bright orange which is fine I'm actually going to deepen some of it with that red that's next to it which is kind of an orangey red Still using the same brush, grabbing a little bit of this red and just doing the very center down here. You can see how my skin is starting to look a little yellowish itself. We're going to fix it with our foundation. But you can also see how this red isn't really a true red, which is fine. True reds are hard to, true reds are apparently very hard to make. Or I should say blue reds are very hard to make. Cleaning that off again. Grabbing some more of that purple. And putting that back over it. Just deepening up that outer part a bit. Just like that. Alrighty, so the look on our eyes is done. As you can tell, there's a little bit of fallout, but it's not too bad. It's easy to remove. I am going to grab very quickly a blender brush and I'm going to blend up here a little bit. Just soften out those lines and those colors, get a bit more mixture. In. You don't want to overdo it. Never overdo it, do your blending or it becomes very, very muddy. There we go. Just a little bit. Alrighty, so I'm going to go finish this up and then we will come right back and we will finish up discussing our palette. Alrighty, so I'm going to show you the full look close up in just a second. I do want to tell you that something that I noticed just now, because um, I wasn't keeping it on during the looks that I showed you before for an extended length of time.
for most of the part. But these mats do the thing that um, I have an issue with mats for is that they um, they don't stay very well. Some of them repair well. These repair fairly well, but they get muddy and darker and they generally don't stay repaired. So this does have those issues that I have to watch out for when I'm um, working on a palette. It's one of the reasons I like shimmers. Shimmers, whatever's going on with my eye, when I repair it, they can, they actually seem to stick and do okay and will stay on longer. Uh, mats, almost every mat that I've tried doesn't do well for that. And these are no exception for that. So they do repair better than most mats. They just do not stay. And they're going to look a little darker and muddier on the inner corners. Um, I also did attempt to put a little bit of the Ofra uh, and Madison Miller Sea Shimmer Highlighter on the inner corners. It's gone. My eyes are just acting up today. But anyway, here is the finished look. Ignore my pathetic wings. We were having issues today. Lots of issues. Anyway, so overall, final thoughts. I like the palette. I'm glad I got it, if only because that way I could test out Sugar Pill. But also, it is actually a really good palette. So it was a nice palette to be able to actually try Sugar Pill on. I do enjoy it. Uh, like I said, I do think it's just better for me as a support palette because I need the shimmers, especially on the inner corners of my eyes. And uh, I do think it, that uh, in this case, she's slightly overpriced. I, I'm not saying that she should be like um, ColourPop pricing, which would be what, 12 to 15 for a palette this size with slightly larger pans. Uh, but I do think that 28 is just a, little, a hair a little pricier. I think this could probably could have done better around 21, give or take. Uh, but beyond that, I think it's a cute little palette. And if you can get your hands on it, if you're interested in getting your hands on it and you can find a place where you can pick it up, I do recommend it. If you're interested, it's a really decent palette, especially if you like mattes and bright colors. If you're not into bright colors, as you can see, they do come off very bright. You can do softer looks. However, you're going to have to work with a very light hand. So if you're not... Uh, experienced in doing that, this probably isn't the palette for you to play with. Anyway, so that was October's one month palette. I actually really, really enjoyed using it the few times that I did use it. The color story is beautiful for me. Uh, just it needed a little bit, it needed some shine. Your girl needs shine. Anyway, so for next month, you are going to use a palette that's going to look very, very familiar to you. I actually was going to use the other palette I got at the same time as this one, but then I looked them over and I looked at the image and I decided this one would be a better palette. And that is the Nomad Berlin Underground palette. Now, I do believe that this one too is limited edition, unfortunately. But we will look it up and find out. And the color story on this, it's all shimmers, but it's gorgeous. I love this. This is beautiful. And it's kind of weird that uh, the Ipsy palette for last month, September, I believe, uh, is the palette that I'm going to be using for my one-month palette for November. But uh, I don't think I've ever done that in the one-month palette. So that's an interesting twist. But it actually works with the image that I got much better than most of the other palettes I have. Most of the other palettes I have are missing a color somewhere. It's the thing with mixing art and makeup. If you're trying to take inspiration from the art, you're going to end up missing some colors. At any rate, so that is it for the day, and I hope you like what you've seen. And if you do like what you've seen and you're not subscribed, I hope you will subscribe. If you do subscribe, please hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. I currently upload three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but we do have bonus videos every now and then. Uh, I am, you know, I'll unbox an indie brand, although that may not happen again until January. We'll have to see if we get some really decent, you know, winter sales and we have all of our uh, dinner uh, ingredients. I just might pick something up. There's a few things I'm really interested, in. but for the most part, I think we're done with our indie brands for the year. However, for those of you who love watching my son open boxes, 
He's got his first new box from a new subscription on the way. He'll be giving them next month and you'll be able to see him every month now rather than every other month. If you're interested in any of those or uh, mail openings from subscribers, then you will have to have that bell rung because those are not on the regular schedule. They go up whenever they get filmed. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Little bonus extras. That's why they're bonuses. They aren't on the schedule. If you're part of my notification squad, you'll want to check both your bell and your subscription to make sure they're still active. Although I don't think either one of them is going to be a problem. I haven't been knocked off my bells in well over a month now. Just like to make sure that you guys check up on it. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you choose not to subscribe, well, we'd understand. But we'd be sad. But we'd understand. But we'd be disappointed. But we'd understand, and you're always welcome back here because we love having the company. And when you do come back again, don't forget to bring your cup of tea. And this is a normal cup of tea. It is not one of my mugs. It's as big as my head. And if you don't want to bring tea, you can bring coffee. You can bring wine and cheese and crackers. You can bring shots. You can whatever you want to do. Bring some milk, a glass of water punch, juice, whatever you want to bring. Just bring something along so you can sit down and enjoy watching us and having a sip of your cool drink when we're having a sip of ours. Alrighty, so we have been sitting here at least 30 minutes. We are still really nice and warm, but hopefully she's not steaming anymore, so hopefully we can get a good taste of that flavor. I'm hoping that licorice hasn't taken over. That would be my one fear about licorice, is that it's going to take over the flavor. But let's give her a sip and see where we are. Okay, so the licorice has gotten a little deeper, and you get it earlier in the sip, but it's not horrible and it's not bitter. I have to say that is a really interesting blend. Oh, where's my box? Here's my box. Um, I'm not getting the vanilla at all. I am getting the honey and the chamomile and that licorice takes taste from the fennel seed and the actual licorice in here. Uh, but it's a nice meld. Not bitter at all. And that's a really nice, that's a nice cup of tea. But I'm honestly not too surprised. I think though I've gotten two others from my Sip Spy Box, and I enjoyed both of those as well. I'm not positive about that, but I think I did. Puka is a pretty deep, and that one tea bag did just fine in that mug. If I think if I had one of my bigger mugs, I would have needed two, but beyond that, it's great. All righty, so that's it, and I hope you all have a great day.